<laughs> this is gonna be a spicy episode i can already tell so i'm just gonna preface by saying this before we get into the introduction this episode is gonna be brought to you by spiciness and also the young whippersnapper here explaining lots of things when it comes to certain people that are on television for nxt this week to my internet dad but hi, all you BC Wrestle Pod nerds here. Your favorite dad and son duo of wrestling is here to cover another episode of NXT here on the Dynamic Dominance. Even though it's a duo now, it's still a trio. So we're, copyright infringement, we're going to keep the name because DDT sounds cooler than the Triple Ds because that's for an after hours podcast. But I am Mikey. I also go by El Jefe around these parts. Joining me is my lovely NAC co-host, Will, also known as Papa Oso. The pleasantries were had. We're just going to get straight into it because what the wank was this episode? Mm. <laughs> this NXT was bananas in the sense that we got debuts. We got people crossing and kicking down the forbidden door in certain aspects. We also have some things that we're going to talk about that made me sad, mad, and everything in between. But let's let's just do it. So this is where we're going. This is going to be really fun because NXT kicks off this week. Ava is in the ring, and she has the podium with something being covered. I was like, okay, we're going to get the unveiling of the women's North American Championship, which I'm like, okay, cool. I love a good belt reveal. But Ava goes and cuts this thing to introduce the person who's going to do the revealing as the newest hip-hop sensation on the internet, Sexy Red, comes out in a one-piece bodysuit. I I say this with as much respect as I possibly can. Never in my wildest dreams would I watch wrestling and I would see Cheeks be, cheeks be clapping <laughs> on my television screen. Mm-hmm. And I want to put it this way because I love Shawn Michaels. I really, really do. But I was just like, Shawn Michaels, what were you smoking, bro? Like, what was the reasoning for, to get Sexy Red up in here? I was just like, that's what baffles me because Shawn Michaels had to put this together. I'm like, what in the world was this was wild. I know of Sexy Red, given my position of my real life, but I'm not going to disclose all that information. But let's just say when you work, with the demographic of a certain age, you have to keep up with certain things. And yeah, but Miss Sexy Red comes out and she unveils this North Amer Women's North American Championship, which, I mean, it's basically the men's version. Just But yeah, I was like, we are in Bizarro World. What is happening? I didn't know who she was. I literally was like, I don't know what was happening. It's just like, I need an adult. I, I don't know. I... I yeah. You know, I I don't know. I mean, again, I didn't know who she was, so I don't I don't take any like negativity towards her or what was going on. I was just like, who 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 is this? And, and you know, this is I think this is one of my and and this is gonna be one of my issues. But and this is not necessarily my issue. I have no issue with Sexy Red by any means because I don't want I don't know who she is. I don't know her, so I have nothing against her whatsoever. But this is more of an NX or WWE, not an NXT, but I think it's a WWE thing that they bring in these random people that have never. I mean, now, OK, now let me go back to NXT. Speaking of NXT, because I don't know if Sexy Red has made appearances in, in other other places, but it just like random people because and I guess it's because they're popular at the time and they're just trying to. They're trying to ride that hype, I guess. I don't know. But it's irritating. Because one, you're going to have a lot of people out there, probably a huge, huge percentage of your demographic, who has no idea who she is. And one, it's a disservice to the fans. Two, it's a disservice to Sexy Red. Because I'm like, if I was sitting in that arena and she walked in, I'd be like, I'd lean over to my buddy and be like, who the hell is that? Do you know Google? I mean, let me look it up on the phone. Yeah, I mean, because and then I'm, then I'm taken out of the whole thing. I, that's my big thing. There's, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna introduce someone like that, which I'm totally cool with, and I think it's a great thing because I think we should, you know, feature like artists and things of that. Because you know, being a theater person, anytime an artist gets on a stage, I'm like, yay. But you gotta preface it somehow. You gotta give us context because. 
like you know maybe put some of her music into into an episode or maybe introduce her early on in something or i don't know you know you see nxt wrestlers at a sexy red concert i don't i don't know something it needs to be something because she just walked in and i'm just like who is this and why she's so important to unveil this because i don't know who she is and to me as a as a fan and supporter of these these guys i'm like i'm kind of offended by it why didn't we use somebody that we know like that and that we that is part of our family quote unquote why are we bringing in random people and again again this is no diss on sexy red by any means i just don't understand it i don't get it and it and it kind of bugged me and i mean it didn't really piss me off or anything it just it just kind of bugged me it got under my skin a little bit the the action not who it was because again i don't know her i don't know her and i don't i you know i have no disrespect by any means i did look her up and and did some background on her and i'm like oh okay cool listen to a, a little bit of her music and i'm like okay that's cool but i was like i didn't know who she was and that and that kind of bothered me a little bit and i and i would love because i think she was cool I, I just would like to have had a little bit of context yeah i guess I, well... i'm not within that age demographic that well yeah to be perfectly clear neither (laughs) am i i'm gonna be completely honest you know will's gonna get mad at me for saying this because of how you the much of an age difference there is between the two of us but i am also not in the air i am too old for sexy red i am just gonna say that i am a man of a certain age 31 is nothing to sneeze at which means i have my whole life ahead of me but I'm in my wow. 30s. I have other things that are taking priority. And don't get me wrong, I'm always on the lookout for new artists, but Sexy Red mm-hmm. is just not my cup of tea. It's just really weird that they randomly brought her yeah. into it. I mean, she was fun in the bits that she had. Like, as soon as this got unveiled, she had a bit of a tug of war with Tatum, who wanted it, which then. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. I was like, okay, if we use sexy red like this, I'm kind of here for it. Yeah. And the which prompted Meechin to come out, and that's what starts our first match of the evening, a qualifying match for the, for the North American Women's Ladder Match at Battleground, Tatum Paxley versus Meechin. I was very surprised of how short this was. I did enjoy yeah. it though, and I did too. this one, I was. I love Tatum, but I'm kind of happy to see Michin getting this. I was like, Mia's about to throw down on this ladder match, which makes a lot of sense. Mia's yeah. been in the industry for a lot longer, and so you need so, you need a veteran, quote unquote, to make sure everyone does everything okay. But I'm excited to see Michin be in this ladder match. <laughs> well, you know, I, at first I was really wanting Tatum to to win. I did because I love. I love Tatum Todd and and I love where she's going and but then I was like you know it makes sense to me that and this match was really good by the way but it makes sense for Michin to go because and yes experience makes sense you you need that and I think it's also because looking at the the women that are in this ooh, excuse me this qualifier or the ladder match oh excuse me coffee they're they need like heavy hitters they need people that are going to come in and be like if you want a championship you're going to have to get through me and and i like that and so i'm very much like this i think this is going to make i think with the mix up we have or not the mix up the makeup is what i meant to say the makeup of the women that we have so far i th- think this this is actually going to be a really really good match i think i really think so you know and i'm and i'm excited that it's a championship match and and so the stakes are higher and so these 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 women are like oh gosh you know the belt's on the line and and i love and even as we get into the rest of the episode i think as we have our last qualifier towards the end even with the winner of that, I'm like, that makes so much sense. Looking at the the spread of women that are going, I'm like, you can see the different levels of experience. And you can see that it's sort of an even, you've got the quick movers, you've got the heavy hitters. I mean, you, you've you got a good mix. And so I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be, as you say, baller, I believe. It makes my little heart happy. I was just like, the old, my older compatriot is using the vernacular yeah. of the kids these days. Yeah. 
I'm gonna be I'm honest. I might. Yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna full disclaimer here. I might be pulling pop shots at Will all night, but it's because I love him. I'm just kidding. Will's great, and I, I I promise to respect. But Meechin is moving on. We go backstage. Gallus and Metaphor are talking because Metaphor wants to know if Gallus attacked no one Dar. They said they pretty much attacked everybody else, and if they did, you know it would be them because Gallus doesn't isn't cowardly like that. And as soon as they said that, I was like, yeah, I didn't think they attacked it. I didn't I didn't think they attacked no one anyways because it made no sense, but you know. NXT tends to throw storylines together <laughs> with little sense sometimes, which then leads us into this weird match between Riley Osborne and Ridge Holland with the dissolution. You are muted. Yeah, I realize that. So before we get to the, the next match, you know, speaking mm -hmm. of the Noam Dar attack, would it not be badass, dare I say, if Oramensa attacked him? That would be fantastic. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Because there's been some tension there, like within the last few weeks. Mm. We've been seeing some like serious like tension between the two of them. And like Noam, I've watched a couple of times. I think this was it wasn't last week because I wasn't here, but the week before. I think it was the week before that when they were they came out in their, you know, their little color poses and Noam started talking and you saw Aura kind of give him a look. And I was like, mm, what was that? Then they had their little issue in their little talk show that one time. And so I'm just like, I would love. And it to me, it felt like metaphor was starting to fall apart anyway, or is starting to fall apart. And I thought, oh, my God, what a great thing it would be if it was Oramensa that attacked him and has been like, oh, my gosh, who could have done that to you? Oh, my goodness. So anyway. I just wanted to throw that out into the universe because I would love that. But now we can go on if you want. I'm, just <laughs> I'm here for an Aura Mensa like singles well, push. You know, and I'll say this because watching him wrestle these recently, these recent weeks has been like exciting. Like he's actually really good. And I think he's sort of in the shadow at this point. And I, I think he should. I think he should go out on his own and be a solo, a solo artist. I mean, why not? I mean, he seems to be pretty talented. I think Lash Legend should do the same thing. I mean, technically, all four of them are really good. They could all be good, like, solo, you know, sort of solo fighters. But but Aura, for some reason, has really kind of stood out to me lately. And I don't I don't really know why. I didn't really care for him when the very, I first got here. But I, he's kind of grown on me. So, but anyway. I'm here for Aura. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about this for as long as we are because I... I should have known better when we got this match advertised for this week and it ended up being the way there is one moment though that i thought like leads credence to what i want to see for the future but we get ridge holland versus riley osborne in a match the match itself was what i expected ridge is your big powerhouse riley is your high flyer this match went about exactly what i expected ridge picks mm -hmm. up the win but the moment that i i was like the match itself it was cool it was fine the moment that made me like glee with happiness was when Ridge went to go get the stairs because he was getting frustrated with Riley and he wanted to use the stairs as the weapon and who should stop him from making a horrible decision. But Thea, which leads me down to, I want a Thea Ridge tag team duo. Let's go. <laughs> like, it makes Oh my me... God. Yes, absolutely. I, yeah, I watching, watching this match, I was like, okay, yeah, it did. It went exactly the way we thought it was going to go, you know, and it's like, I kind of, I'm, you know, I've been kind of it on Chase U recently, and I think it's because they don't know what to do with them. I think that I really, I, I think a lot of NXT's problems come down to, oh, what do we do with them now? And so they start creating these random storylines, but I liked this one because it, Pulls focus off of Chase U as a whole and really focuses in on Thea and Ridge because they have been doing something with the two of them. And then the Riley comes in, and I personally think it's 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 out of jealousy. And but I really, really like this. So if this is going the way I hope it goes, then I would be very excited to see how this plays out 
because I agree. I'm I'm here for the the Harley Quinn Bane, and I just want to see that. I want to see the Thea and Ridge. You know, him walking out with her on his shoulder and her just like, ha, 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 you know, that's sort Team of like, little like bit, let's go. Team Little yeah. Bit 2.0 I'm, because I'm we, got that on, we got that on main roster a few years ago with Alexa Bliss and Braun Strowman because if you, Braun Strowman is, re, is a really big guy. Alexa Bliss is a really tiny woman. Put them together. They were Team Little Big in the mixed match tournament. And I am here if Ridge and Thea becomes our NXT version of Team Little Big. I'm super excited. And you know what? We're going to talk about Chase U because we're going to couple what happens later in the evening with this because the dissension is happening. Everybody is talking. Well, the other thing, too, is that Ridge went to go shake Riley's hand and he wanted none of it. And he, he left with away. Duke. <laughs> he rolled away with Duke. And then we cut backstage later in the evening where everybody is kind of like at odds with each other. Riley is still upset. Duke takes Riley's side. Thea is not okay with it and takes Ridge's side. And Andre Chase is in the middle of it. I was like, the split is coming. We're picking sides. Andre is probably, I think Andre is going to pick, in my perfect world, Andre will pick Duke and Riley, which will yep. allow Thea and Ridge to go off. And Ridge is like non existent to what's happening because he comes in later into frame to thank Andre for everything. He's like, Hey, where did everyone go? And Andre's like, everybody had to go do something, but we'll all get together later kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> the dissension is happening. Yeah. You know, I think that I agree with you. I think that Andre Chase, I think he'll go with uh, Duke and, and Riley. I really do. Because they still, they still are like, chase you. Yeah. And Thea's a little more like, yeah, chase you. Cool. And, you know, and I think that, I think he's good. I I think that Thea has become too wild for them because you know we've gone you know th we've gotten the wild Thea and you know yeah and she and I think she's too for them. I think because you know you see like Duke and Riley and all the other they're so chill and you know calm and they're just like hey we're chase you you know. And she's like, you know, she's like, <laughs> she's like, if we took, if we took the energy of Jody Threat from TNA and amplified it to like ten, yeah, holy goodness. So I, I agree. I hope, I hope that's coming. I really do. I really, I do. hope so too. You know, that's something I like about NXT. Something I didn't like though was what we got next because we got this backstage interview with the OC. I'm going to be completely honest. I appreciate all the work they have done in New Japan. They've been in this business for a very long time. But while it's not as bad as Corbin when he first got to NXT of how cardboard they are on the mic, I just don't care. I don't care about this tag team. I don't care that they want they keep accusing Axiom and Nathan Frazier, ducking them all the time. I'm just like, I'm done with this. And then when they told... You know, backstage interviewer corresponded that they were going to be facing Idris and Nofe and Malik Blade. I'm like, my boys are going to take another loss, aren't they? And we'll talk about that match. But then we get an interruption where Oro Mensa got attacked backstage. I was like, I'm telling you, the back, and besides the parking lot, now the backstage, backstage in NXT is the more dangerous than the parking lot now, which is kind of crazy. But I love the fact that later in the evening, Jakara and Lash have a conversation. It's like a whole Scooby Doo mystery. It's like, girl, I'm. It's like a horror movie. Girl, I'm scared. Are we next? And Lash yeah. is like, I'm gonna go out and talk to Trick because I gotta. <laughs> he's gonna be honest with me because Jakara and the rest of Metaphor think that Trick is attacking, you know, all right. the members of Metaphor, which I'm like. You have not, NXT, you have not have given me any indication that Trick would do this anyways. I'm like, he's literally like a baby face, like white yeah. meat baby face. It makes yeah. no sense motivation-wise why. I was just like, he's not Carmelo Hayes. He's not going to attack No, people. and see, that's the thing is I'm like, please don't try to make him out to be a Carmelo Hayes. Please do not do that. That is so ridiculous. Trick is his own man. He's his own type of performer. He it, don't make him out to be this bad guy. Now, and, and and please stop kicking his butt in the ring all the time. We'll talk I, about I'm, that at the end of the oh, episode. I know. I'm, I'm just so angry. He is our about NXT it. champion. Why is he getting his butt whooped every yes. single? We'll talk about anyway, that. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get there. there. <laughs> so this does lead to the tag team match. Very quick, Malik Blade and Anderson Nofe. 
with the accompanying Brinley Reese with them taking on the OC. Brinley takes a nasty bump when they get knocked into her. She saw that perfectly. And just like I unfortunately called it, the OC pick up the victory here. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. However, I did enjoy Nathan and Axiom coming in, coming out, swinging out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. And, I and agree. he's like, look, see, but here's where I'm afraid of because they get on the mic, they talk about how they ain't ducking nobody. So at Battleground, they're going to put these titles up against the OC. My biggest fear is the OC is going to beat our boys for this title. I'm like, no, don't see? do this to me. That's my biggest fear. And yeah, I'm afraid that it's mine too. Me. I agree. It's mine too. And I and if it happens, I'm gonna be so pissed. I don't care about the OC. I think I don't even think they should be here. They need to go on to somewhere else. Cause and you know, and I'm and get talk getting back to this match. Idris and Malik had no chance against them. I mean, honestly, and I love those two or three because I love Brindley as well. But to put them up against the OC just as cannon fodder kind of pisses me off because that's what they did. Because they had to make the OC look badass so that when Axiom and Nathan come out and they confront them and attack and blah, 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 blah. Then it's like, oh, yeah, look at all this testosterone and energy floating around. And I'm just like, why didn't you just do this like in the parking lot? Or backstage. Why did we have to bring Idris and Malik out there, who I absolutely love and think are great? And and I'm getting tired of them getting crapped on all the time. They're being they're literally just being used as a prop. And that's kind of annoying, you know? And I'm like, I get they're they're newer, they're younger, and blah blah blah, this, that, and the other, but they're good together. And I'm sorry, but I could, I don't know. I could see them winning, like getting, working their way to a, to a tag team win. I could see it. But for some reason, the powers that be just want to use them as a prop. And it's getting old. It's getting so irritating. And this is one of the things that I don't like about the parent company. And, and is that the idea, one, our, our tag teams, our POC tag teams and our POC players and wrestlers get crapped on constantly. And that irritates the crap out of me because it's like, what the hell? You know, and then we like cut loose people that, you know, like our, our Native American wrestler, he got cut loose and he and I actually and you know, Bear Hill, I really liked him. And then all of a sudden he was gone. Didn't even didn't even get a chance to prove himself like at all. And then suddenly he was gone. And I'm like, wait a minute, because there was some folks in that group that were not good, but you kept, and I don't understand, but you got rid of the native American and that bugs me. And I'm not saying necessarily there's a conspiracy, but there probably is because you know, Everything is run by old white men. And it is. And I'm an old white man. I can say that. As the kids say, Papa also is woke. <laughs> and he's on the side of us. There's a yeah. reason he's part of the BC Wrestle Pod host. He stands for what we're trying to do out here. And yeah, I'm tired of seeing, you know, not even the POC. I'm just tired of Malik and it's just, just taking an L yeah. almost every single week. I was like, I don't like to use this term as often as it should because it's kind of lost its meaning in this day and age on the internet. But I'm tired of seeing interest in Malik be jobbed out to everybody. I'm just yeah. like, can we just get them a win or something? But, you know, Give them something. It's, it's it is what it is. Oh. But we have the OC taking on Nathan and Axiom for the tag titles at I almost said stand and deliver at Battleground yeah. in two weeks. <laughs> I am hoping that Axiom and Nathan retain, but I am so I have a sneaky suspicion that OC might take the titles and I'm like, nobody cares no and see and i don't is and that's here's my thing about that is i'm very much oh. like oh sorry my, my pups is i know i forgot what i was gonna say oh my god the puppers <laughs> the puppers is like yeah they completely threw me <laughs> <laughs> it had well, to do with if, them at battleground and i can't remember what it is but if they win at battleground in it, it, it's okay, anyway it, i don't i forgot what i was gonna say so if i think about it I, i'll come back yeah, for sure. So we move on from this. We get a video package featuring Dante Chen, you know, our 
only, it seems, in NXT Singaporean superstar, which I was just like, I'm kind of here for that because, you know, we're used to Chinese, Japanese, but never Singaporean and other Asian or specific Islander nations being represented in wrestling, which I think is cool, which then leads into a backstage segment where all the all the cool people are supporting Dante. We have Hank and Tank, you know, being the, the biggest cheerleaders, which I really love. And then it is interrupted by the person we hate the most right now. Lexus King interrupts. He talks about how Dante's win last week was just a fluke. Dante says, all right, let's run it back. We're going to have a rematch and let's do it tonight. And Lexus is like, you're on. And I'm going to prove that that win last week was just a fluke. I was like, that's the other thing I'm having a problem with outside of Lexus's character. We are also jobbing this man out to lose almost every single week too. So I was just like, this this was a thing that happened and i just can we just get the match out of the way because i don't want to talk about it later yeah so we can later in the evening we get lexus king versus dante chen this goes for about like four to five minutes yeah, dante fine. chen once again picks up the victory which i was like okay i love seeing that lexus king mm -hmm. continues to get his butt whoop that's great okay and maybe it's just me but watching lexus king beat up dante chen afterwards and be a little more vicious i was like do this more often give me this yeah. intensity I'm kind of here for Lexus you, King just destroying people now. I was like, yeah. this is weird. Where was this the last couple of months? If you gave me this version of Lexus King, I would be so more yeah. behind it. And I can ignore the badly tuned up beard. I was just like, this is the intensity that I wanted to see. Why did it take so long to get here? I don't know, but I agree with you. I was just like, well, where the hell has that been? Because I can get behind that. I can get behind the Lexus King that's like, I'm just going to destroy people, you know, as opposed to this like Loki style character that he was creating that made no damn sense whatsoever. And, but yeah, when he like went at it, I was like, oh, well, where the hell's this been? Now, I would have probably been like, why didn't you win that match? <laughs> I'm like, if th this is what we get after the match, why didn't you use this in the match? That's why I was like, where's where was this energy when you were fighting Dante the first time and this time? So I agree with you. I was like, now, if this becomes the new Lexus King, I could get behind this. Yeah, he still needs to do something with his makeup artist, but... I can I could get behind the this Fire aggressive, your beard this more artist aggressive. Immediately. Yeah, seriously, seriously. But I could get behind this this more aggressive Lexus King. I could totally, you know, if he he needs to change his wardrobe too, you know. Sir, is looking like a used Texan car salesman without the hat in this. I was like, what in the Cobra print bell bottom is this, sir? Yep. You look like you walked out of an Austin Powers movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, like a, it's an Austin Powers knockoff movie. Seriously, it's like one of those spoof movies. It's ridiculous. But speaking of things I could get behind, I can get behind the team of Javon Evans and Trick Williams. They're backstage coming up with a game plan. And who should join them but Miss Sexy Red? And oddly enough, I was just like, you know what? I can actually get behind these three as an unofficial fact. I was just like, we got to love it. All right. But that pales into comparison with what happens next, Will, because we're far enough into the review I could say this curse word. This shit was wild. So Roxanne Perez is in the middle of the ring, and she cuts a short promo, and she talks about, again, Roxanne, I love you, but we got to figure out how we deliver this promo a little bit because it's not what was in the promo that was bad. We just got to find the cadence and the, the delivery, delivery style that works for you. <laughs> I was like, girl, you look like you're reading off a of report card. Like, it's fine. It's okay. I love you, though, so I can kind of sweep it up to the side a little bit. But we've got to work on it. But basically, the content of the promo is, is that all she cares about is defending this NXT championship. And she is the best. And I'm like, going to be completely honest, Roxanne was born to do this because she's been doing this since she was like 12. Oh, no. So, yes, she is the best we got right now. Let's keep her in NXT for a little bit because you – Main roster calls up the rest of the people that were also really good for NXT for the women's division and the men's division. We lost Blair and Lyra and Kiana into the draft. So that's kind of crazy. But Roxanne says, you know, I am this champion. I am going to defend this. And, you know, I win. Ava comes out. It's like, hold up, Roxanne. We can't be doing this victim woe is me story because it's not great. I didn't say you were a bad champion. I just don't like you complaining and whining. 
But hey, you want a challenge? So I'm going to give it to you. And at Battleground, you're going to be facing. So I thought to myself, you know, the rumors is like Naomi would come down. I was like, okay, cool. Naomi versus Roxanne, maybe Dakota Kai. Maybe one of the main roster, you know, girls would come on over to NXT to fight Roxanne. And I would have been fine either way because Roxanne versus anybody would be great. This? Ah. Shit. When that <laughs> siren hit in that theme music, Will, I had woken up my dog. My mom had to come check on me because I was screaming like a little girl because who should grace it but your TNA Knockouts champion Jordan Grace has made an appearance on NXT television. And before we get into what Jordan said to Roxanne, Will, what in the actual fuck is happening right now in wrestling? I, I don't know. It's like it's like the it's like in sci-fi when two realities start to mingle with each other. It it when when I was just like I literally am like I don't know what I'm watching anymore. It's it wait what. What and I'm I was like, oh my god, this is awesome because you know I love my TNA folks, you know, more than probably anybody else, but well, not more than anybody else, but you know what I mean. But I, I just and of course, and I'll agree with you, everything on, on Roxanne is one, God bless you, girl, but we got to get you some like public speaking classes. And because I agree, I, I think that the promo content was great, but she just she has not settled into her rhythm yet. You know what I mean? And I love her and and I and I love the I can you know the intensity of her voice is great, the timbre of her voice is great, tonality is good, it's just the the delivery is just not quite in sync yet. And I think, you know, a couple of, you know, a little bit here and a little bit more. What she needs is she needs more mic work is what she needs. They need to put her on the mic more often because she hasn't been on the mic that much, you know, and and they usually they put her on the mic. They they make her go crazy and she doesn't speak much and just storms off or whatever. But she needs to cut some like backstage promo stuff. She really does. I think they really need to put her on the mic more. And normally I'm, you know, I don't say things like that, but I think she's, she will get there quicker if she has, if they give her more to do, I think. Because right now she's just like every so often. So there's no true like muscle memory happening. You know what I'm saying? That she doesn't have that sort of mouth muscle memory. But yeah, when the, when the music goes and all of that, I was, now I will say that I was I mean I got a spoiler on this like early on and I was like oh that's a choice and then then it then I saw it and of course I was like huzzah cuz I love I love her I love this thing but then my mind started wandering then I was like wait a minute why is TNA and NXT mixing when they've never I don't think they've ever mixed before right not no, since NXT has been in, you know, a thing, they have never, well, because of who was in charge of WWE during that time period, it's he who shall not be named anymore. Right. Very, very on my own island type of approach where NXT, SmackDown, and Raw would not intersect with any other company. And now that said person is out. I mean, Jordan gr said it in her little promo to Roxanne and to the audience. Well, that's true. Because Jordan did make an appearance at the Women's Royal Rumble this year in January. Also, yeah. I may or may not make that into a clip to showcase at our end of the year episode to watch me and Andrew lose our gourds like little school <laughs> children when that happened. Because I was going to watch the Rumble by myself because none of the other WWE boys could make it. But Andrew hopped on because he's like, you know what? Are you watching the Rumble? I'm like, yeah. He's like, can I watch it with you? I'm like, sure. We ended up just talking mad amount of crap the whole entire time because the pay-per-view was okay. The men's Rumble was boring. The women's was the best thing that happened. But yeah, we lost our absolute minds when Jordan Grace made an appearance, just like I lost my absolute mind when she's. We come to find out she's gonna be challenging Roxanne. I was like, I was like you. I got excited. I was like, oh my gosh, this match uh -huh. is gonna be fire. And then when I sat for the rest of the episode, and today I sat and I marinated in that, and I was like, yep. hold up, wait a minute, let me think about this real quick. So yep. funny enough, 
So Will is aware of my friend, but shout out to Uriel. I had a conversation with him earlier today because he called me. And he's like, why is TNA and NXT mixing it up right now? I was like, they're separate brands and different companies. I was like, you know what? I thought the same team. Then I remember that WWE and UFC have a merger group called TKO. TNA is also part of that TKO network because they also have ties to other companies there. So it makes sense now that NXT and TNA are mixing it up because they're part of the same parent company. And from a fan perspective, I'm excited because that means that we can have crossovers. As somebody who reviews things and very protective of the TNA folks, I'm worried that we're going to have these crossover events because I'm afraid that the TNA kids are going to be losing a lot of the time in their interactions. And that's exactly why I'm kind of bummed that this is going to happen because I love Roxanne. I love Jordan. It's going to make me very sad that Jordan's probably losing to Roxanne. I was like, no, don't do this to me. This is like one of those matches I'm excited for, but I'm going to cry either way. I'm going to cry if Jordan loses. I'm going to cry if Roxanne loses and well, loses that title. Well, I mean, Jordan has to lose. Well, yeah, she has I mean, to lose. There's no way that she could win the title off of her because it's not a TNA title. It's a, you know, you know what I'm saying? That, that's a, that'd be very, I think that would be very weird. But of course, I'm, I'm also with you on the idea of like, why in the world would you have a champion fight a champion and have a champion lose what again you know i think the match is going to be fantastic and i think it's probably my most anticipated i'm just like as someone who reviews nxt and tna respectively it makes me really sad because one of these Mm -hmm. one of these women are going to lose and to me it's a lose-lose situation the match is going to be fire but jordan losing makes me sad because she's literally your women's champion in tna and to have her get pinned is crazy on the other side you know in the shock of the century if they do let jordan win what are we doing with roxanne because you already did her dirty her first title reign by having it stripped from her and that weird booking decision with everything and then if you have her lose the title now i'm just like i don't know i mean again someone Mm -hmm. that's not even part of your company yeah Honestly, as much as I hate to say it, I would have preferred Naomi because, you know, both women would be part of the company. Naomi versus Roxanne would be great. Again, I'm excited for Jordan versus Roxanne. And honestly, it's probably my most anticipated in that match. But I am just worried. And according to reports, this will not be the only time that TNA and NXT will be crossing over. Like there is a rumor report that a certain, you know, female wrestler who goes by the boat might be making an appearance at Slammiversary, but who knows? We shall see. Again, as a fan, I'm excited for matchups, but as someone who's very protective of the little indie federation known as TNA, according to JVL, yes, I'm putting him on blast, but I can't wait for him to have him review against all odds with us because he owes me a flipping favor. I'm worried that Jordan, again, we, we kind of wrote ourselves in a lose-lose situation. I'm going to be sad by the end of this. I'm going to yeah. be mad if we get a no contest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But see, that's what I was saying. I'm like, I don't understand why this is a title match. Now this would have been just a fun crossover match. Like this would have I'm been here like, for it. so cool. But I mean, first, cause first of all, my thing, here's my thing is that you're bringing Jordan in who is already a champion and you're, you're fighting and she's fighting Roxanne, who is the current champion of NXT. If Roxanne wins, what does she get other than retaining her title? Right. Because if Jordan wins, she technically wins the title off of Roxanne. Yeah, because it's going to be for the NXT Women's Championship. So there's no... There's no equality there, is what I, you know. There's nothing. Mm. I think there should have been a stipulation where if Roxanne wins, she gets to challenge Jordan for her title at a future date. Yeah, which that's you know, what, yeah. since if TNA and NXT are going to be working together for the foreseeable future, Roxanne can pop up at a TNA pay per view, go against Jordan. That'd be fantastic. But it's very one sided because Roxanne has everything to lose. Jordan just has. The only thing for her to lose is just, hey, I lost in another company. Yeah. 
but there's no stakes because her TNA championship is not on the line. But again, I'm excited, but I'm also worried. We shall see what happens. And honestly, I'm look, I'm looking to see how the summer goes for TNA and for TNA to see, you know, which NXT stars start popping up into these things. And this was just surprise number one. Surprise number two comes at the eve at the end of the show, which we'll talk about too. But we get a promo package from somebody who we, we've been missing on our television screen, and I was happy to see Mr. Eddie Thorpe is looking I to return know. to action. And I'm mad because I'm like, now NXT, you decide to put him back on my television screen as we're about to <laughs> not cover NXT anymore. I'm just like, Pinky's up. I hate you. But this was a really good promo. I really enjoyed it. It really I'm was. Just like, and I. And I have missed me some Eddie Thorpe. I love Eddie so much. We, I do too. We can sp- yes. Anybody who has watched our reviews for as long as they have know how much we love Eddie Thorpe. And I'm excited to see him come back from injury and be ready to... Let's get this man right. into a championship picture. I think Eddie, it's time to get Eddie into a championship picture. I agree. At some capacity. I totally agree. Totally so agree. We go, yeah. So we go from this promo... To our next match, which got set up earlier in the evening, Ariana Grace versus Lola Vice. Lola Vice easily wins this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then this was, Lola This was like You don't even no gotta contest. go over the match. I was just like, no. as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh Lola's <laughs> whooping Ariana up and down this ring, and sure enough, she did. Yeah, it's like Ariana, Lola, I love you, girl, but <laughs> girl, it's like, girl, you in danger. <laughs> you are you in danger girl <laughs> but the important bit is what happened afterwards because lola vice calls out Shayna baszler and miss Shayna baszler is not having any of it so this is what i want to see Shayna's like i will jump all these dudes right now because the security guards were trying to hold her back i'm like Shayna could easily break everybody's arm right now if she really wanted to because Shayna is that much of a badass even though we just got an nxt underground match i'm actually excited because these are actually two mixed martial art wrestlers and fighters who are going to be going at it at battleground i was like i want to see kicks i want to see punches i want to see people getting choked out it's very violent i might there might be some things i got to work with on my therapist with and now that i heard all those things that came out of my mouth but i'm excited for Shayna versus lola at battleground i'm more excited than i was last week yeah i agree i agree yeah, I, I, the the match itself. God bless, Ariana. God bless. But you know what? I think is it just me, or does it feel like they're about to do something big with her? Like they're about to shift her somewhere. Well, I feel like they kind of have to because we kind of just dropped everything that was going on. Yeah, with Gigi you. thing. We, I mean, she's she hasn't been as successful in her matches lately. So I'm wondering if there's about to be a shift in her character. I don't know. Something, something feel. I feel like the winds are about to change for some reason. So anyway, but yeah, I, I'm yeah. <laughs> so then we get a quick vignette about our one of the newer women on the roster, Carly Bright, who comes from a cheerleading background. Which I was like, yes, gymnastics and cheerleading is always welcome in wrestling because that means you get to do flippy acrobatic things. Oh. And then we get the obligatory, all the girls are in the locker room. We start some drama because Carly's with Natalia. Izzy interrupts. Carmen, went, Carmen, you know, stands up for Carly. Izzy goes back. And then Carmen and Izzy begin to fight. And the whole women's locker room is in the brawl trying to tear everybody apart. This is the trope we've been it. using for the last couple of months or so where some, one of the women has an issue. So they throw a punch and everyone starts fighting in the locker room. I was like, this is getting out of hand. This is nuts. So it seems that Izzy and Carmen are still beefing. Sure. All right. (laughs) So we already talked about the Lexus and Dante match and Lexus. But this is the thing. And I am gonna. I hate that Andrew's not here because I'm going to channel him when I say this. Because we get the Lexus entrance. We go to commercial. We come back. And we have to sit through a no court catch crew promo where... Charlie Dempsey, who still needs a haircut and still cannot talk on the mic, puts Damon Kemp to to face Tony D'Angelo for the Heritage Cup next week, which then proceeds later in the evening. We get this family segment, which was not great as well, because they got to study up on Damon Kemp to make sure that Tony's ready for the match. I'm like, Tony D'Angelo, you have semi quasi murdered people on my television screen. What do you mean you need to see the tape? What in the what in the fresh hell is happening? I know. I, you know, I don't. Again, I, it's this. It's this stupid Godfather stereotypical 
thing that we're doing with them and it's and it's personally it's getting old for me it's, it's totally getting old and i'm just like i just want to be like tony just fight just be a fighter and not whatever the hell this is that you're creating here i i know what you're doing and you know you could i, I just i don't know i'm so i'm sorry but gangsters they went out in the 80s and 90s nobody cares about gangsters anymore <laughs> i mean truly i mean if you i, I just they're boring because they're 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 predictable. That's the thing. It's like everything you do is predictable. Stop stop being this. Be something else. You know, I'm just it's just this isn't working for me anymore. It's just I'm so tired of it. And I like Tony D'Angelo. I like him as a wrestler. I think he's you know, and he's good to look at. And you know, it's just I, I just I'm just I, yeah, I'm just tired of the the stereotype. I'm just so tired of it so yeah so there's all that that happened let's see we got that we already talked about lexus dante no quarter catch crew we get a heritage cut match next week for the go home fine then we get this really weird promo from josh bricks he's like i gotta find myself i'm like bitch where like why do you need to find yourself we established that you were being a bad guy i was like yeah. why this is giving me we're gonna turn him to be a baby face again i'm like NXT, yeah, I was just like, really? Really, peoples? Really? I was like, we're just not going to let... This is my biggest... This is the other issue that I yeah. have with NXT tonight, and what my biggest issue and complaint has been for the last couple months. You keep switching whether somebody is a face or a heel without giving it time to truly marinate. Because yeah. this whole promo is like, I got to find myself. I'm like, find yourself where, Josh? Like, you are a, <laughs> you are a towering 6'8", my dude. You can squash yeah. people for lunch. You can squash me any day of the week. I'm exactly. just putting it out there. But I'm like, sir, what do you mean you have to find yourself? You are literally a biker, like, 6'7", 6'8", behemoth of a man. Like, what do you mean you have to find yourself? This is not the BFG by Roald Dahl over here, okay? Like, what yeah. the flip is happening? You know, I don't I was know so either. Pissed. I was just like, what the hell? I know, it came on, and I was like, oh, what's this? And then he started talking, and I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? Okay, so I'm going to be a bad guy, and then I'm going to start, I'm going to get my ass kicked three times in a row, and then I'm going to be like, wait a minute maybe i've been wrong this whole time maybe i'm not a bad guy after all oh no let me go find my brother in wrestling and hug him and say i was wrong the whole time <laughs> it's just like what <laughs> just two to three months of all this work for nothing nothing i know just pooped it right there i was just like wow you just took a dump on my lawn, and wow. I'm very upset with you. Yeah, NXT. me too. I was so mad. I, I too, I was so mad. I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm like, don't. Okay, first of all, you got me invested. That's where that's where I get angry. It's like, if you create something and get mm -hmm. me invested, and then you're just like, oh, no, never mind. We're not, we're not, we're going to cash out. You know, start at ground zero. And I'm just like, I just literally wasted months, a month, to what's been, what, two months now since he's been doing this or whatever. So I just wasted all that time on on this character that he was creating. And now what? Now he's going to, yeah, you're right. Now is he going to go back to being the face, the baby face? NXT, How do you do that? <laughs> I need you to stop being a I need you to stop being a flip flopper and not and then not in the good way. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm. All right, I gotta calm myself down. Actually, no, I'm gonna stay mad because then we get into this really weird Sean Spears backstage promo. That was creepy. He, he's like, I have Sean Spears, I know you didn't mean to, to come off this way, and I don't know if it's your oh, fault or what you were given. I blame everybody in this situation, but he's like, I need to guide the youth. I was like, sir, yeah. there I was like, sir, <laughs> there are lot there are invisible lines that we are not crossing right now. I was like, we NXT was, cannot afford oof. I was it uncomfortable. Was a, I was too I was uncomfortable. Like yeah. it was giving me like snake vibes. I was like, ew, ew. 
it was i literally i literally like scooted away from the computer when i was watching it i was like i almost texted you uh, when i was watching it last night i was just like i think i need to take a shower after that sean's I, oh my god he it was, was looking so... into my soul he was looking into my <laughs> so soul. creepy i, was I mean just i like, felt I'm like i had to, i felt like i should have called the police like seriously i was like i think he's about to molest some children I need an adult like, immediately. Like seriously, and I mean, I'm folks. It's, I'm yeah. not saying that Sean Spears is a pedophile. I'm literally just the way that it was that it was presented. I literally was like, someone needs We've to gone call from HR. Cor- yeah, yeah, we so- have gone from quirky character to borderline <laughs> not great stuff. No, like locked basement type stuff. Yeah, no. Yeah, it was so, so- creepy. <laughs> We're gonna leave this because the more we talk yeah. about it, the more yeah. creeped out, and the more uh, I need to take another shower. Yeah, no. but then we get into something I actually really, really liked our final qualifying match yeah. Ren Sinclair versus Kalani Jordan. This was my favorite match of the whole entire evening. <laughs> Ren was great, but Kalani did the thing and she's in the ladder so match. I am so happy, and now I really want her to win, right. <sighs> Honestly, I do. If I had to pick between Kalani, I want to see my. Obviously, it's not an elimination style match, but in the final moment, I want the two people to be fighting for that title to be Soul and Kalani. Yeah, Those are the I two I want to see. Honestly, I'd be here if either one of them won, and then another is to their first feud. Soul versus Kalani is a match I need to happen like immediately. Yeah. But Ren was that, no slouch in this match. No, no, she was not. I was this was I this I think this was probably my match of the night. Same here. This is my you favorite know, match of the whole entire just, evening. Because it was good. It was good. It wasn't you know, it didn't feel like, you know, like God bless <laughs> the Tatum Tatum and Minchin. I mean it Minchin, it, it that fight was felt so like uneven to me. This one felt so even. Like I'm like, oh my god! Either of these women could take it. Either one of them. I was rooting for Kalani, so I'm really glad that she won, because I really wanted her to be in this ladder match. Because I really, 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 really want her to have a success in something. Because again, she's another one that we have just thrown to the dogs so many times. And you're right. I really want. I really want something good for her. Now, Soul. I absolutely love Soul. Soul Ruka too. Don't get me wrong. I think she's fantastic. So I agree with you. If her, if it's Soul or Kalani, I will be totally happy. Totally. But now that Kalani's in the running, I'm really kind of. I'm really behind Kalani right now because I really want her to win. I really want her. I think she deserves it. I think she's been working the longest for it. She has gone to the dogs multiple times and she has taken it on the chin. And I think it's her time to rise. I really do. And I think she'd be a great champion. I think she would, you know, cause she's one of those great, you know, she's sort of like, she reminds me of, well, she reminds me. Oh, well, well, yeah, she reminds me of Trinity. I mean, honestly, just in her personality in that idea of, you know, gracious, you know, but if you if you rub her the wrong way, she's gonna rip your face off. But so I just I really want something good to come to her. I really do, and I think she deserves it. I really believe that. And again, not, this is no diss on Soluka or Lash or you know Fallon or any of the others. It's just God bless. She has just she has taken it. She has and she's taken taken it all in stride. That's what I love about her. So. That's my two cents. Yeah. I'm excited to see Kalani. And now we have the field of six women finalized for this ladder match. And woo, this is gonna this is gonna be a nutty match because it's Sol Ruka, Kalani Jordan, Fallon Henley, you know, Meech. Basically, it ended up being the way that I hoped. And we have three heels, three faces. Your heels are Fallon. You have Miss Jade Paca in this whole entire thing, too. Who's my third heel? Oh, and Lash. I guess, well, I mean, Lash is technically a heel, but she's kind of in between right now. Yeah, and then your faces like... are... Yeah, and then your faces are Meech and Soul and Kalan. 
Lash, I'm excited for Lash to throw girls all around the ring with her. And this is a perfect match. You have your powerhouses, like Jada and Lash are your powerhouses. You have your quick wrestlers in, Mm -hmm. like, with Fallon. You have your, yeah, your acrobatics with Soul and... This match, honestly, I think is going to be really fantastic. I cannot wait. It's the one I'm most looking forward to. Oh, absolutely. So from here, we move backstage where Ava is with Mr. Stone. And somebody from Level Up, (laughs) Miss Stevie Turner, who is just like it all in her posh British accent, which is very adorable and love her she's like how come jordan grace is getting this title shot and not anybody else who's been here i was like you know what girl i kind of feel you on that but also she's right behind me isn't she and that's exactly what happens because jordan grace comes in is like you know what stevie i totally agree with you so next week you get to show off for everybody else and i get to show roxanne and the wwe universe what to expect at battleground i'm like jordan's about to tear that up a whole new one next week low-key though it's crazy that jordan grace is going to wrestle on nxt television next week i'm just like okay she made her appearance we won't get her until background oh she's actually going to wrestle on nxt tv that's wild to me but stevie turner girl you it's you like, just wrote a check that you can't cash nope i know uh, i'm like miley you I know, I danger, the whole girl. time i was like girl girl shh, shh, girl shh, 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 shh. she's right behind you shh, shh, shh. it's like, like oh, oh, this is one of it's those you and like the no girl. like the no like the no doubt song don't speak i know what you're saying i, know. I need that clip i need we need that sound clip we need that from whoopi goldberg that you in danger girl <laughs> you in danger girl just so we can be like click you in danger girl you know what? We're going to add it to the soundboard. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. It's seriously so, needed. It's so funny because we use it so much. Might as well. Uh, it's like, Ooh, uh, this is how I felt. You in danger, girl. <laughs> you, in da- you in danger, girl. <laughs> Ooh. So we leave this. And finally, I was just like, we have like 15 minutes left. And yeah. it took us this long to finally get a Wesley sighting. I was like, damn, it took us forever. I know. Well, honestly, I'm going to be completely honest, especially after what resulted after our main event. I was just like, you couldn't have just given me Oba versus Wes one-on-one because this is what we need. But on- honestly, Joe is probably there to take the pin because ultimately I do think it's going to be Oba versus Wes one-on-one, yeah. but we have, to ki- we have to get there apparently. But Wes is backstage he's interviewed he wants to get back to this title oba femi interrupts i was like this is the match i will re- i want to see more than what we're getting at battleground and yeah. because i was just like joe coffee's there to take this pin it's gonna be really inter- weird to see but i love this little face off i wish it's one-on-one at battleground but you know we'll get there maybe at heat wave it'll be oba versus west one-on-one but who knows at this point yeah we get the bumpers for next week's episode, and then we get into our main event. I must say, at first, I didn't know how to feel about the curly Q Joe Coffee mustache yeah, and the I lack mean, of body hair. I was very yeah, upset. I'm like, no, how I dare y'all? But too. then I thought about it. I was just like, no, yeah, I still, I still let it. But oh, I in mean, our main yeah. event, I was just <laughs> like, yo, your brother has kind of got it going on right now. I was just like, what is happening right now? But anyways, in our ma- all that aside, in our main event, this is a tag team match. The Gallus Boys being represented by Mark and Joe Coffey, taking on the team of the young OG, Javon Evans, and our NXT champion, Trick Williams. And both of them are being escorted by Miss Sexy Red, which, you know, I kind of also like that she kind of played equalizer too in a weird way. Mm-hmm. I was just like, how do you? I was like, Coffee Brothers, how are you going to let Sexy Red do that to you? But, you know, I don't want to say this match was bad. I will say, however, that I definitely could tell the Gallus boys carried a lot of this match because Trick is still trying to figure out how he wants to be as a champion. And honestly, Javon kind of also carried the team too, as Javon is more experienced, which is really weird to say. But, you know, this match was fine. You know, I can't believe I'm going to say this and I'm going to get some hate for this. I don't like that the that Gallus lost because you brought them back. They beat up Ivar. They beat up Josh. They beat up Wes. And Joe Coffey is in this triple threat for the North American champion. And you have them lose? 
I know it's to the NXT champion, but like, really? Well, I you like, know, oof. I was like, I, why I, did you, why? I, I think, well, because, because I think again, they put, they put the wrestlers, they put them in impossible situations. This is one of those situations. If Trick Williams wasn't involved in this match, I think the Joe and Mark would have walked away with it. But because Trick's in it and he's their, the champion, and again, they've got to show him get his butt kicked. And but I think that if Trick wasn't in the fight, I think they would have won. I don't. I think they don't want to. I the the, the court. I could be completely wrong. But I just don't think they want Trick to lose. You know, because he's he's new. He's brand new at the champion belt. I mean, you know, he's he's only had it for what two three weeks. Three? Yeah, just about like three four, about a month maybe. So it's fairly new, and so. Mm -hmm. I, that i can see that plus i think they're trying to do something with this trick and javon thing and i hope it's not going to become another you know trick mellow thing you know what i mean you know and it's it's like and i hope that's not what they're doing i hope they're not thinking that oh trick can't do it on his own so he has to have somebody with him and that's what i'm really i'm really hoping is not happening right and I understand why we had to have Trick. Can I be? I'm gonna say something blasphemous. Can I, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> I feel that this probably would have been my match of the night. Not to say that anything that Trick did was bad, but honestly, if you for fun storyline purposes, if you really wanted to, yeah, right. honestly, I would have rather seen the Gallus Boys take on Javon and Oro Mets yeah. instead, because you know. Oro's got beef with Gallus after being attacked. He's like, nah, Trick, I want in on this match. You sit out, I want vengeance. And then that, I ought, not to say that this match was bad, but I think for you also enhance a storyline that Oro wants to, you know, he got beef yeah. with Gallus because he thinks that Gallus attacked no one Dar and they attacked him. So he mm -hmm. wants to fight. But no, we got to make all of our wrestlers like get super defeated when they get beat up backstage. It's really, really weird to see. Again, I didn't hate this match, but you know, Javon and, either. Javon and Gallus carried a lot of it. And from a weird storyline perspective, it made no sense that it made no sense that <laughs> Trick. Trick is being pulled in a lot of different directions because I thought it was going to be Noam versus Trick for the title. And then the Gallus boys are in, so now he's feuding with Gallus, but he also has still beef with Metaphor. It's like he's be Denix, he doesn't know which feud they want to start with. So they're like, let's just do both and see what it goes. But anyways, Javon and Trick pick up the win here. They're celebrating the ring with Sexy Red. Lash Legend comes out. I appreciated the fact that Lash and Sexy Red were cool. She's like, handle your business, girl. And they dapped up and then javon and sexy red headed to the back and we get the infamous question that kickstarts everything that happened at the end lash needs to know trick did you beat up noam dar trick doesn't even get like five words in and then the lights go out and then he is jumped from behind and they're like who is this and then for those of us that watch aew and ring of honor and if you are familiar with his work when he was a tag team with josh alexander and tna Mr. All Ego Ethan Page made his appearance in NXT. He gets on the mic after beating up Trick Williams, stating that he attacked Noam and Oro, and he's about to whoop that trick. And you know, he we end the episode with All Ego Ethan Page holding the NXT Championship. I am conflicted because e Ethan Page is a phenomenal wrestler, and I'm still upset that. AEW and ROH didn't do anything with him. I thought him and Kyle Fletcher were going to go at it for the television championship in ROH, but it didn't happen. However, I still have a problem that so far since Trick has become champion, he's been getting his butt whooped every single week. First it was with Noam, then it was the Gallus boys, now it's all ego Ethan Page. This is no fault of Trick, but you are making Trick look like a very weak champion. And I'm like, sir, you had this man beat Ilya Dragunov, who is like the toughest wrestler that we all come to know and love in NXT. This man bleeds on occasion half the time during his matches. And we need to tell Ilya that wrestling is... Somebody got to tell Ilya that wrestling is not real because he is out here trying to destroy fools left and right. You had Trick beat Ilya for this title. And then since he's gotten this title, you have had this champion be laid out every single mother tucking week. And I'm mm -hmm. sick of it. 
Yeah, you are making me too. Trick Williams look like a weak champion, and it's pissing me off. Oh, me too. I'm so angry every time. It's like you look at the, you know, and this is what this is what I don't get. You put him through hell with Carmelo and all of that. Then he wins the championship off of Ilya, fair and square. And now you're treating him exactly the same way you did when Carmelo was doing what he was doing. And I don't understand it. I, I don't. And it's not. And if it's this whole idea that, oh, we'll tear him down to build him up. I, I'm like, that is dumb. You all, all right now, you're literally, I'm just like, oh, okay. Maybe he wasn't ready for the championship. Maybe we should give it to somebody else. And which is wrong because he is ready for the championship. He was ready a long time ago. He just, all the crap kept getting in his way. And now he is the champion and you guys are treating him like crap. And I don't understand that. And I don't, I don't like his storylines right now either. I don't like what they're doing with him story-wise. And I just am like, what the heck? You know, it's like, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why is it every single time? And it has been. Every single time he finishes a match or finishes a promo, he gets jumped and beaten down. Not even like like jumped and he like whoops whoops some ass. He literally gets his butt handed to him. And then you bring in this this new guy who I don't know. And I, I told Mike I didn't know who he was when he came in and did what he did. And then I find out that he came up from the or came over from like the main rosters or whatever. And that, you know how I am with that. That just pisses me off. I'm like, pisses me off that you bring in these sort of like main roster characters to whoop up on NXT, these NXT stars, these champions. And, and it just, and it irritates the crap out of me. It just, I'm, I'm so over it. I'm so over it. It's just, every time I see it, it just pisses me off. Like, give the guy a freaking chance. Like, you know what? Instead of, I mean, you're literally making him look like he can't hold on to his own title. And we know that he can. He took the damn thing off a of dragon, Ily, you know, Ilya dragon off. <laughs> so, anyway. Err. I know. I, I'm so frustrated. And honestly, I don't know if Turk is going to have a match at Battleground. Because so far we have the tag team championships, the North American championships, the inaugural women's NXT North American championship. We have yeah. the NXT women's championship on the line. I'm pretty sure we're probably going to have one more match, which is probably going to end up being trick, but him versus Ethan page so soon. Yeah, no way. Not a, not a battleground. There's no way they would do it. Well, I can't say there's no way they would do that. They probably would do that. Oh, they're no, stupid. Actually. Somehow. No, I don't think Trick is going to have a match because I forgot the one match I didn't mention, Lola versus Shayna in NXT Underground. Oh. So that's five matches right there. So, yeah, I don't think Trick... That's crazy. You don't have your NXT champion defend champion his title fighting. at yeah. Battleground. That's really... This whole battle build to Battleground has been such an up and down. Weird. So we have the go-home show next week, but let's, re let's give our final impact ratings for this. I'm going to keep it really short and simple. I have so many questions and everything's all over the place. I'm giving this a five out of 10. So it's pretty yeah. much the same. It's, it's a worse score than what I gave last week, but I am confused with the build to battleground. I have lots of worries about certain things with lots of other people coming into NXT and cross promotions and what that means for my little TNA kids. But also how are you going, the booking of your women, your main women and your main men's champion has been all over the place. And I'm worried that we're going to continue that trend. <laughs> Storylines are get like getting, you know, outdated. They've been dragging on for too long. I'm giving this a five out of 10. There are stuff I liked about this, but there's also way too much that kind of brought it down for me tonight. I'm like, I was so mad by the end of it. I gave it a five as well, only because there were too many questions raised. And I don't think they're going to be able to answer them all in the next episode. I think they created far too much questionable stuff that 
you know, basically, I think they wrote a check their ass can't cash. I really believe, and I'm really and this. Yeah, and I've been watching, and the build up to this pay per view has been weird, like weirder than any other one I've ever I've ever watched. And so, either next week's episode is just going to be like on fire, or it's going to be like, oh crap, what the hell is going to happen at Battleground? I mean. Either it's going to make me look forward to Battleground or it's going to make me not look forward to it. I just, yeah, there was just way too much, like, question marks over my head the whole time. I'm just like, what the hell? Why? 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 Seriously. Well, Papa, also, we have what, we have the Go Home Show next week, and then we will be covering Battleground in two weeks as the review. So we'll see what happens by the end of this, but... Thank you so much for tuning in to another DDT review. We will be back next week for the Go Home Show and also making our predictions for Battleground, which is kind of nuts to think about at this point. But from all of us here at DDT and the rest of the BC Wrestling Pod Boys, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, stay biconic, but more importantly than anything, you deserve your finish, your story. We will catch you for the Go Home Show next week. But until then... Tata for now. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Vibe Tribe production. What's going to happen next time? Well, you're going to have to tune in to find out. But until then, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, and as always, make sure that you keep the good times rolling. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>